This is Chris. This is Randy. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Four, Four Pillar, Pillar Sports. Sports. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Four Pillar Sports. This is Randy. Joining me, of course, as always, is my brother Chris. Chris, how you doing, brother? Dude, it's summertime, bro. It is. Um, We've been spending a lot of time out at the pool, having a good time. Kids are here for the summer, so, you know, everything's good. Yes, sir. Everything good is good times. Everything is right under the sun. You know what I'm saying? Until you get too much sun, because you spent four and a half hours in it and get sick. I did not spend two days in the house, because you know uh-uh. I'm an idiot and almost got sun poisoning. But yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> besides the point, uh, we missed a podcast because of it. <clears throat> yeah, mm. uh, that's my fault. Yeah. But hey, guess what we get to do? We get to preview the NBA Finals. Let's do it, bro. I'm excited about this. That's right. That's right. Game one is starting tonight. And, uh, well, ad started tonight because by the time this actually airs, game one should have already completed. We'll discuss who we think should win game one and the series overall. But let's first, let's back it up a little bit and let's talk about how we got here between the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks. That's kind of weird to think. It is. It's not a championship you'd think, a championship matchup you'd think would be possible or likely, even it is. It's yeah, really likely. Weird. I mean, even the even the teams that were actually in the playoffs, you're like, mm-hmm. really? Yeah, I mean, it was so, crazy. So round one started off with Boston getting some revenge on Miami Heat, beating the Heat 4-1 to one in that series. In the conference semifinals, the Celtics would beat the fourth seed, Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland being in the playoffs, looking that, pretty good. That's pretty cool, man. They're a young team, dude. Mm-hmm. They had a quite a battle, though, in the first round as they went seven with the Orlando Magic. Ugh. That's right. The Orlando Magic made the playoffs. And they went seven, dude. So that means these are two <clears throat> good young teams. Yes, sir. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting next year to see what they do, too. Right. Absolutely. All right. And then in the Eastern Conference Finals... The Celtics took on the Pacers and brought out the brooms and swept Indiana out of the playoffs. Sweeping, man. Just got to sweep them out of there. Yeah, that's right. You did. That's what you saw. It was crazy. It was insane. Let's talk about the Mavericks' path to the finals. In round one, they went six games against the four-seeded Clippers. Oh, man. The Clippers. Yeah, well. Come on, bro. Well, what do you expect? It's the clip show, so. Anyways, next round, they would take on, oops, I went too far. They would take on the Oklahoma City Fun- Thunder, who were the one seed in the West this year. But they would be taken down in six by the Mavericks, which was a little bit of a shocker. I was a little surprised. Uh, I mean, I give credit to Dallas in this series because, you know, they had the experience that Oklahoma City didn't have. But I kind of actually thought that series was going to go seven. So I was a little surprised it ended in six. Yeah, you never know what the playoffs do. And, and these were some good games. So there you go. Yes, sir. All right. And then in the Western Conference Finals, the Mavericks almost swept the Timberwolves. That's right. The Minnesota Timberwolves were the three seed. And they were the ones that took out the defending NBA champions. Denver Nuggets. You know what the f- previously. And the funniest thing about all this is, over the past couple of years, you and I have been talking mm-hmm. about all these young teams yeah. that you have to watch out for, and every single one of them has been in the playoffs this year. Bro. Yep. This year. So people, you need to start paying attention. Yes, sir. So that is what has led us to the finals. Dallas Mavericks, Boston Celtics. It's going to be epic. Game one tonight in Boston. Oh, man. Uh, the Lakers did make the playoffs, so we'll talk about them just for a brief second. They did manage to not get swept by Denver because they did face the Nuggets in the first round this year. But they only won one game, which led to the dismissal of Mar- of Darvin Ham. So. Well, you know, I mean, that's how it goes. I mean, you know how the Lakers are. They like to win, so mm-hmm. it is what it is. Yeah, and then there's been rumors that uh, he lost the <laughs> he lost the attention of LeBron and Anthony Davis, which then led to his ousting. So, if you lose your key star players and they don't trust in you, it's not going to come gone, back. You're gone, dude. You're gone. 
You know, we could just say... Even though we could just blame them, you know what I'm saying? But whatever. Yeah, I mean, we really could, honestly. I mean, but yeah. So, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the losers of the conference finals. Let's start with those Indiana Pacers who got swept. Indiana had a good offense this year. They were one of the top-rated offenses. But man, they got to figure out something on that defensive side because they could not obviously slow down Boston. I mean, I don't even think any of these games were technically close. I mean, you look at it. I mean, the first game did go into overtime, but they ran out of gas and ended up losing by five. Then they lost by 16. They Game three and game four were a little bit closer, but I mean, it, they just didn't, they seemed to be running out of gas offensively. Because they were trying so hard on the defensive end to at least keep it close, but I mean that's just not good. Yeah, man. What do we What do we always say about defense, man? Defense wins championships, and it really does, and especially in basketball, dude. Yep. If you can't get them boards, you can't you, you can't do all that. Can't get key stops every now and then. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, I mean, so, and it's it's unbelievable to sit there. And Boston again. Not only one of the top-rated offenses, but, again, a top-rated defense, which is why they were the number one overall seed in hosting. And that's why they're getting to host the NBA Finals. And not only that, so, but if, if you get to... home court. If you get too gassed out trying to just keep up, mm-hmm. you know, keep up with pace, keep up with score, right? Um, you know, you're going to wear yourself out. And then the defense is going to suck that much more. So, right. there you go. And then on the other side of the bracket, the Minnesota Timberwolves, each game, I mean, this really was a, a struggle. I mean, they got blown out in the last game. Game five was a, just a big blowout. Mm-hmm. But you had game, uh, 108-105, 109-108, which was a game winner hit by Luka Doncic. Uh, game three was a little bit more of a wide gap. It was a nine-point game. Uh, game four, they, you know, they managed to really – clamp down and get that and avoid the sweep but then when they uh got that final game i mean they were you can tell they were done it was gas they lost by 21 points 124 to 103 yeah experiment. yeah and sometimes sometimes that's how it goes man you get that win and then and not only that you go into the next game thinking okay we got this one mm-hmm. this one's gonna be easier and then you kind of fall off on defense or you know, and that's really what it is. You fall off on defense, and they're going to score on you. So. Yep. And the thing is, is uh, you know, Anthony Edwards was is their best defender on the perimeter. Uh, Ro, uh, Rudy Gobert is their best interior guy, but Edwards was putting so much energy on trying to guard, guard Kyrie throughout the whole series that he was getting gassed late in the game in the fourth quarter. And, and uh, Carl Anthony Towns just basically disappeared offensively. So mm-hmm. he was basically really no help because the game they won, Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns were do- pretty dominant offensively. But in the other four games that they ended up losing, you know, Edwards was gassed and Carl Anthony Towns just seemed to disappear. And it really uh, truly affected them. And it makes you wonder did they put so much effort and energy in trying to beat the defending champion Denver Nuggets in the previous round that they just weren't mentally and prepared. physically. Prepared for the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, that's true, dude. So I mean, I mean, that's what it looks like. I mean, poor Edwards. Edwards needs a consistent, um, needs someone consistently on the offensive side of the ball to help him out. Because if he's going to spend all the energy being that two-way guard where he's really good on defense, really good on offense, you got to have somebody who can take some load off of him on the offensive end. Or even someone who can help on the defensive end. You can get another perimeter defender so he doesn't have to guard the best guy night in and night out. Or he can concentrate a little bit more on offense. Or if you get a guy who's good enough offensively where he doesn't have to be the guy late in the games. And he can kind of, you know, he's got to find somewhere where he can yeah. conserve enough energy to be, you gotta to be able to handle build, late. you kind of kind of got to build around him and... Mm-hmm. And make sure he doesn't get so gassed. Yeah. Um. The one thing I like about the NBA is, you know, their free agency and all that is quite different from other, other leagues and other sports. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can end up getting a good player in the free agency draft, all that, because it's so 
the draft lottery is so much different than, than right. you know, oh, well, you got the re- the worst record, so we know you're getting the best player. Right. It's it's a lot different, so it makes it more interesting when that time comes around and maybe they will come up with something and maybe build around them. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, if I'm them, I'm looking at probably trading Carl Anthony Towns and a package of picks for someone. It's a little harder in free agency to get someone to be willing yeah. to live in Minnesota. Not only that, but you're trying to free up some cap space, whatever. Yeah, because you're going to have to pay Anthony Edwards at some point. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, it's weird because it's weird to see him actually doing so well in the NBA because we watched him um, in the Adam Sandler movie on Netflix. He was the young guy who was challenging his Adam Sandler's uh, guy he was trying to bring across into the NBA. Yeah. In that movie. Uh, I can't remember what the heck it's called now. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Sandy something? No, that's that's the other one. That's the other one. Yeah, that's the one where he was um, the. Uh, I know which one music artist. I know what you're talking about. The though. music agent. He, he was the, he was the basketball coach. He, yeah, yeah. Well, he was the scout trying to scout become a coach. Mean, yeah, yeah. I I should know this movie right off the top of my head, but for some reason I can't. I forgot to, dude. I know what it is too. It's just gonna it's be a good movie. movie too. Oh, absolutely. So this one you just go on to. On here real quick, go Adam Sandler and just look it up real quick. <laughs> Hustle. That's what it was. Yeah. Hustle. I should know that. We gotta watch that one again. It's yeah. actually a good movie. It is. It's a really good movie. It's really weird though to have see Adam Sandler in a in a on role relationship with Queen Latifah. That's what threw me off. I'm like, this is an interesting dynamic. Yeah, dude. It's not a typical Adam Sandler well, of course then again, um, him and um, What's her name? The female singer and and the and Sandy Wexler. Yeah. What's her name? Dude, it's I'm the drawing, Black singer. I'm drawing blanks too, bro. God, why am I having blanks all of a sudden on these people? I, I know why I'm having blanks, people. I, I'm special. So. <laughs> Other than that, bro. That's it, dude. Oh my goodness. I know her name, dang it. This is what's gonna kill me. <laughs> As I know exactly who it is, too. All right, go to Sandy Wexler. Go to cast. Jennifer Hudson, thank you. Yes, Google. Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. Jeez, I cannot believe I did not re- remember Jennifer Hudson's name. But yeah, it's a, it's just kind of weird. It's a little weird dynamic because you're not used to seeing it, but it's really interesting and dynamic. Not only that, but I mean, the, the movies he's been doing lately, I mean, sometimes they're funny, but... Most of the time, he's he's been pretty serious about his roles, and yeah, it's kind of kind of nice to see a different side of him. So yeah, the only one I just not going to be interested in watching, and I'm not going to, is that one with him in space with the spider. I haven't seen the previews on that. Is it is it bad? It's just weird, dude. It's him. You're not. He like goes crazy because he's in the international space station, I guess, and he's by himself. So he's imagining a giant space spider? What? Or uh, he's I mean, but it's not a it's not like trying to kill him or anything. I mean, it's, how it's high funny. how high do you have to be in space, man? Pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, very yeah, low amount of oxygen too. Something, dude. But, but he's been in uh the uh it's uh Paul Dano is the is the voice of the spider, which is really weird. Wow. That is strange. Yeah, so it's just, but it's, I'm just sitting there like, I, I can't wrap my head around watching that. No thanks. But, uh, of course, when he comes out with Happy Gilmore 2. Yeah, man. Uh, you, you know we got to do that. We'll that's, be rocking that. that. That's like childhood memories right there, dude. We got to go to that. Absolutely. All right, so let's get back on to the basketball. Uh, we went on a tangent. It's yeah, okay. Oh, my Adam friend. Sandler tangent. Adam Sandler tangent. You always got to have an Adam Sandler tangent at some point. I mean, come on. It's technically sports related. Yeah. He's done sports movies, so it's not like it's wrong. Uh, so anyway, so let's go back to that. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, I, I, I'm telling you, though, if, if uh, the Timberwolves can figure out somebody who can match Anthony Edwards on either side of the court, they're going to be dangerous. It'll take the pressure off of them, too. For and it, sure. Yeah, for sure. Because, obviously, Carl Anthony Towns just kind of disappears when the lights are bright. It's almost like the Kirk Cousins of the NBA. <laughs> yeah. 
Goofy eggs. Oh, we're on we're on prime time. Lights are bright. I'm sorry, I gotta go hide. <laughs> sorry, guys. Bye. Sorry. <laughs> I can't handle this kind of pressure. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and everybody's going. Where the hell did our big seven foot guy go? <laughs> right in the bench, where he should be. Right. <laughs> in key in key moments. But man, uh, and then the Pacers, man, they just they got to get somebody who can play defense because they're all offense and all go and. You, that's not going to win you. We've seen it with the Phoenix Suns. Uh, you know, the Dan Tony days with uh, Nash and, Amar- and Amari Stoudemire. Yeah, man. You can run up and down the court all you want, but in the playoffs, you can't run at a pace all the time. You will get slown way down. And not only that, but in, in the season, dude, you know some teams are like, okay, we'll take this game because, mm-hmm. you know, we need to rest. So... Let's just go right out there. Let's right. just do what it's, we got to do. It's but, a little bit. And see, that's the thing. That's one of the things I don't point, like about that long season is you'll get t- players who are like, well, we have 82 games. We can lax every now and then. Yeah, and then the playoffs, you know everybody's playing, bro. So. Oh, yeah, everybody's playing hard because it's, it's four games, or seven games at most, four games at least to figure it out and get it done. I actually wouldn't mind if they would consider going back to when the first round was five games. Yeah, man. Because yeah. that, that gave you more guarantees of upsets, too. Yeah. Eight, uh, eight seeds, seven seeds, six seeds were knocking off some teams because, you know, you have a bad shooting night a couple times, you might be in trouble, and then you start really getting tight, and it makes things a lot more interesting. So, I mean. Definitely, man. I really think sometimes they, they need to think about, it's just like, it's just like baseball, dude. You need to think about contraction the schedule. Yeah. yeah, making it lighter, making it littler. Because these, these players, they get hurt, dude. Mm-hmm. And then the longevity of it all, you're lucky to see, like, like say, the Lakers. Anthony Davis is always getting hurt, dude. Right. And think if you cut that season in half. Yeah. He wouldn't get hurt as much. True. I mean, not even not even half, because I know people be like, half is a little much. Yeah, but... right. Can't drop it down to forty-one yeah. games. Yeah, I understand. I not, I get that too, but it's just like sixty-six. Yeah, like, something like that. Just you know, give it some of it. Or if you really want your guys to play more and play most of the eighty-two, why aren't you expanding into July, maybe even to early August, or but, when they did that little. They did that little tournament thing they did. It's like, why aren't you throwing bonuses on it? Or why aren't you doing something, right. you know, where this team gets something special if they get it or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, yeah. I understand. But I, that's not what I'm saying, though. It's like, you and once, because once basketball ends, at, at you know, towards the middle, towards the somewhat end of this month, basically, depending on how long this play, uh, this yeah, all finals we, go. All we have is baseball. <laughs> you only have baseball. Why aren't you challenging, like what the NFL has done to you at the beginning of your season, why aren't you challenging baseball like the NFL has done to you? Mm-hmm. Expand your season. That way you're playing less games in a shorter amount of time. You can play your, you can keep your 82 game schedule. If you expand it out to maybe you end it right before the regular season of college football kicks off at the end of August. That's an interesting concept. Right? Because then you're, because then, what, then if you do that, so the playoffs generally start in April, mm-hmm. like the end of April. So if you expand it out to August, so that's two, almost two full months. That means you're actually, we'd still be in, we'd just be about at the end of the regular season now if it was, if it pushed it out to August. Yeah. So the regular season would just be getting ready to end. And they'd still be competing with every sport. Yeah, and you'd be, and then like I said, you'd be pushing baseball. Baseball's basically going nowhere. Yeah. So, I mean, so you would have, you would, and then, you know, there'd be like, because then you'd have all that travel rest. You'd have rest, so you're not pushing everybody. You might be able to then maybe get your players to play a little bit more often and not need to take a game off. You might get competitive. Because it is a little bit different with, with basketball. I will mm-hmm. say that, dude. You have to be in peak 
condition, dude. I've run up and down that court yeah. the whole game, dude. And right. I, I know they, they have substitutes. They get to sit out. But I'm sorry. Sitting out five minutes and then having to get back in? Right. Dude. If you're lucky, it's five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on how quickly your replacement gets into foul trouble. Unless you're the, the Clippers and you can just say, hey, I'm not playing today. Right. Of that, too. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, that's what I get, too. So, uh, if you probably add another two months to the regular season, you might actually probably only have to play maybe at most three games in a week rather than four, five, and sometimes six yeah. in a week. And then, and then everybody would kind of, you know, get that chance to rehab, rest, mm-hmm. do all that. And it'd make games more interesting because, you know, people would be well-rested. So. Right, absolutely. You know, so it's just like, it's like, because by the time you get to the playoffs, and you know, the playoffs would be then starting, or, or, you know, a little bit later in June. They'd end in August. You'd be done, boom, right into football season, and then you're good. You're you don't have to worry about it again. And then us until as sports October. fans, us as sports fans, actually have something to just continue to watch. Trust me, I like baseball too, but I mean, we're not paying really attention until October it, if our team is in it. Exactly. If our team is in it, then we're not. Then we're excited about. October I mean, unless baseball. you're a diehard fan and you just you're that type of fan where you want to watch every single game, but I mean. Even I know you don't do that unless no. it's unless it's a really good game and you know it's going to be one that, or a good series and right. then you're like I don't, I don't like this it. weekend the Dodgers are going to be up in New York taking on the Yankees yeah. I'm going to watch Saturday's exactly, game because it's going to be a good game yeah so I want to watch that one otherwise I really even haven't even watched the Dodgers much at all this year I've watched maybe a couple games yeah and that's only because I want to see Shohei. <laughs> So, I mean, we don't even have Kershaw going yet. Kershaw's not be- not started a game yet. Walker Buehler barely got back into the rotation. Yeah. Uh, Yamamoto has me scared to even watch him because he's being yeah. shellacked, and it's supposed to be our ch- Japanese, you know, our other Japanese, Japanese pitcher. Buzzsaw. Yeah, our Japanese buttsaw pitcher. Besides Shohei when, he, when his uh, elbow's ready to go. It's really weird to see. I'm like, how do you have... Tommy John surgery, but it's okay for you to swing a bat, but not throw a ball. Because you you start out bent elbow, and then you have to extend out and hit. But but for some reason, your arm, which doesn't really bend that much it's, at the elbow, I don't know. It's weird. It's I the guess, mechanics of it all, I guess. I guess it just it just freaks me out because I, I would <laughs> think the fact that you're flinging your arms, swinging a thirty four ounce bat around. As freaking hard and fast as you can would seem to be more... Would make your elbow hurt after a while, yeah. Yeah, but whatever. It, they Do what you want, I guess. <laughs> 2025 Shohei Otani pitching again will make me happy, I guess. I'm just sitting there going, can we just have him pitch one inning a night out of the bullpen? <laughs> because I think he could do it. Even yeah. left-handed, I'm pretty sure he could do it. <laughs> right. Because I think he pitches right, but he bats left, if I remember correctly. But I mean, it's just I just but it just that's my bad. Um, but yeah, I I just the Indiana Pacers got to do something. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what they can pull off, so that way they can start um, trying to be more competitive. Uh, before we get into the actual finals itself, Lakers news. Uh, it looked like for a long time here we were going to sign JJ Redick, who's going to be announcing in the finals starting tonight, and then all of a sudden today. Breaking news by Adrian Wojnarowski: We might be getting Dan Hurley out of UConn. So I don't know what to take anymore with this head coaching search. I'm just like, well, somebody hire somebody so we can be done with it. And he's like, I'm so tired of this. Can you just just hire somebody already? You know, let's go. I'm so done with this coaching search, bro. Because I'm like, I don't feel like we should have fired Luke Walton, but we did anyways. Yeah. We brought in Frank Vogel. I don't think we should have fired Frank Vogel the year after. Just because we had an, a, a not so great year, and you forced him to have Russell Westbrook. Yeah, bro. That was stupid. And then, so I'm like, okay, so that sucked. And then we bring in Darvin Ham, who had to begin the year with Russell Westbrook. We make a change, we make a run. We got tired, though, and we ran into Denver, who was 
destined to win the title last year. Yeah. And then we come back with the whole entire court. We don't make really much any adjustments. We bring back, we bring in some other guys who weren't even healthy, so they didn't even really play, which cost us some health, I think, on our on our our team in depth. And then we run into Denver again to begin the playoffs. Damn it, Denver! And then Ham has to be fired. Damn, damn it, Denver! Damn it, Denver! And I'm just sitting there going, brah. <laughs> All right, for one, can we get rid of freaking LeBron so we can move on from this crap? Yeah. And two, can we please trade Anthony Davis? Because <laughs> I love Anthony, but he's oh, not going to stay in when, when, he, when he came to the Lakers, dude, you were ecstatic. So, I mean... It's... Yeah, but even I was sitting there going, I'd rather have had Beal because I knew... Yeah, because you knew he was he wasn't as injury prone. So. Yeah, of course, then he got hurt this year, so I was like, well... Yeah. But that was... We're talking a few years difference now, so... Yeah. Plus, you know, I don't know what was going on with the Phoenix Suns. That that was just weird. And then Vogel got fired from again from Phoenix. So I'm just like, can we get Vogel back? Right. Can we bring back Vogel? Someone who can coach defense? <laughs> Please? I mean, Ham's supposed to be a good defensive coach, but if LeBron ain't going to do it, no one else is going to play defense, so... Um, one minor, one little last Laker thing. The speaking of Anthony Davis, the New Orleans Pelicans are deferring their pick to next year's first round pick. So we actually do have a first round pick this year at pick seventeen, which a lot of people believe we're probably going to draft Bronny with. That would be cool, but I mean. <sighs> I don't want his dad. I don't know if I really want him either. He's six foot one. He plays guard. Yeah. It's not like we're getting six foot six foot seven little brawny. Yeah. If it was little brawny, he was, if he was six seven, I'd be like, all right. Or yeah. six one brawny, I'm like, nah, I don't know about that. That's a little yikes. I'm just not looking forward to it. All right, so let's talk some finals, bro. Game one already underway as of right now. Uh, let me see if we even... Ha- I should have a score update for us just a second here. Stop popping up with stupid stuff, phone. All right, let's get an update. Uh, it is currently 5-5 at this point. So, there we go. We're off to a tie right now in the first quarter at 5-5. So, not bad. Not bad at all, bro. Um, game one, it's going to... I'm actually a little surprised it's our only 5-5. Five, five, uh, five, five. I thought it actually Boston was probably going to come out. Um, a little bit more aggressive, but at the same time, they got done with their series so quickly, they might have to, a little rust to knock off. So, right, right. Um, I mean, this game, this series took forever to get started. The C, uh, series for the Mavericks, I think, ended Friday, and here we are almost a week later. No, I think it ended before Friday, I think it ended Wednesday, something like that. It, it's a long time. It's been a long time. It's like yeah, enough time for them to to go home, relax, and, <laughs> and you're kind of back, like you gotta come back. And, and the like, fans are like, "Can we get to the freaking finals already? Yeah, can we do it? Yeah. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? It's taking forever." Not, not only that, but it gives it gives a player enough time to sit there and get in their own head too. Right? <laughs> Boston's kind of like, well, crap. <laughs> yeah. We won, but we won too quickly. And then Dallas didn't win game four, so they didn't sweep. So they had another game, so they might be a little more hyped. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. But um, then again, they could be rested, dude. So Yeah, but could it be rust? That's rust versus rest, bro. <laughs> We're going to see what it is yep. in game one. Uh, I I expect a good series out of Luka Doncic. Um, I just don't know if, he's, if the Mavericks... I, I, I kind of want the Mavericks to win, and this is because I'm a I'm Celtics hater in this aspect. As a Lakers fan, I don't want them to get to 18 before us. Um, so <laughs> that's why I'm pulling for the Mavericks. It's well, like, I guess I'm in the same boat. So yeah. uh, But would it surprise me, though, if Dallas wins? It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but I have a hard time seeing them actually beating Boston. With you know, if it if it was 
And if it wasn't seven, I think if they had to do it in nine, then I could give it to them. But in seven, I have a hard time. Yeah. I have a hard time seeing them winning four games in seven. So, But we'll see. I mean, obviously, game one tonight is already underway as of the recording. Um, by the time you all hear this, it should be over. Um, and you'll know who's up 1-0. I think Boston will win tonight. Or will have one tonight for those listening. And so I think we'll by the time this is airing, uh, Boston will be up one nothing in the series. But doesn't mean I don't think that Dallas can't win it. But I just I I feel it's gonna I think this is Boston's year. Now that especially since Dallas uh, not Dallas, Denver didn't make it, I think it's Boston's year. What do you what do you got? Probably, dude. Yeah, I mean, uh, Boston is a well rounded team and I know the Mavericks, are, they're good, dude. They're good. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But Boston has that lineage. Yep. And you know they want that They want that championship. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was funny on uh, First Things First. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah. Well, it was yesterday, but I watched it today because I fell asleep before I finished it last night. Nick Wright yesterday had said that the Celtics... If um if they don't win, could be a um uh, this iteration of the Celtics could be a nineteen nineties version of the Buffalo Bills. Oh gosh, the nineteen ninety version. I'm like, Yikes, I'm dude. like, damn, that's bro. Not, that's not even nice to put on them, dude. It's like, what well, the freak? well, he he's he's so vested in Dallas because <laughs> of Luka Doncic right now. I mean, basically, yeah. As soon as LeBron's done, he's gonna be a Mavericks fan or. Whoever Luka Doncic is on, right. fan, he, he's 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 his new LeBron. So, but what I what I do like about Luka is he's not really, he just goes out and plays. Yeah, he doesn't really go out and talk trash, do anything. Nope. He's more. Well, <laughs> he talks I, trash to the fans. But I'm saying, dude, he he backs it up. He does. He talks trash to the fans. You're about what happened, right? No what? So. Uh, what was it? The last game or the game before? It had to be last game. They were um, someone was courtside, and Snoop happened to be there. It oh wasn't gosh. aimed at Snoop. It wasn't aimed at Snoop. Snoop just happened to be there, and he started busting up laughing when he heard it. But someone showed up, um, saying that uh, Luca cries too much to the referees and shit, and he makes a hell of a good basket. Looks in the direction of that fan and yells, "Who's crying now, motherfucker?" Oh, nice. <laughs> and Snoop was right in that general vicinity. And Snoop, and just, like, Snoop just like, "Damn!" <laughs> <laughs> and starts laughing like, "Damn!" <laughs> hey man, I mean, sometimes you got to put fans in their place because yeah, they just they're haters, bro. So it yeah. is what it is. And uh, I always think it's it's cool to have players interact with fans, even if sometimes it's a little controversial. Yeah. So, hey, man. I mean, and that and that's the thing, though. When it comes to basketball, fans are right on top of you because they are starting at the out of bounds and out yeah. and up. It's basically where you are, fans. Mm-hmm. It's not like we're football you have you have a wall you have a, you have this, you, have this yeah. you have out of bounds then you have about 30 yards of space for the team and equipment mm-hmm. to the wall and then fans and then up yeah. or in baseball you can have depending on where how the dimensions are of the field you can have almost 100 feet of length of space between them and where the players start the play at because, you know, the, they obviously can go diving into the fans to catch yeah. foul balls and stuff. But besides that, they're not that close to the fans in the general sense of where the play starts and all that. So, yeah, but they're all right on top of you. So. But what I'm saying is, uh, what I like about him, he's just one of the guys, dude. And for the most part, he's pretty quiet, mm-hmm. I guess, unless you piss him off. Yeah. So, I know him um, enough. you know... And uh, you know, and any good basketball basketball player, they they talk a good game too. So yeah. I mean, if they have to, yeah. I mean, that's what a lot of people were saying about Anthony Edwards. He just he's he's a talker. And I was like, 
<laughs> he wasn't really playing a character in Hustle, was he? He was being himself pretty mm-hmm. much. I was because I didn't I didn't think he was like that, and then all of a sudden in his postseason in the press conferences, I'm like, okay, he was he's just being himself. He was really just being himself in that movie. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll give him credit for that. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, and I mean, and to give I'd give him credit because to not only play yourself in, in character like that, but also to be play, willing to play a person that you know is not the star of the movie. Yeah. And you're going to kind of be shown up at the end of it. Yeah. You know, that's a little bit respectful, too. That's a little that's a little respect earned right there, too. Thank you, bro. Because, you know, he could have just been like, nah, man, I ain't going to do that. I'm trying to show up and be all like, I'm the best. And, yeah. But he had the willingness to do that. I'm like, oh, that's, in, that's impressive, Anthony. Edwards, sorry. I don't know you personally, so I can't just sit there and call you Anthony. <laughs> Anthony? And, it, and you're... Anthony? I mean, I guess if we want to go by nicknames, because I do call LeBron LeBron instead of LeBron James, then it's Ant Edwards, so... Ant Edwards? Yep, they call him Ant, so... Ant Man. Yeah, better than Cat, who seems to go into a nap mode every time the bright, light, bright lights get on, his teammate, so... Yeah. That's Carl Anthony Towns, by the, the way. Cat. No one, yep. No one, knew, no one knew that one. It's Carl Anthony Towns, so that's Cat. All right, man. So I like it. So I I think we're both in agreement. Celtics will probably win, but neither one not of us that will. We want them to, but yeah, right. But not that either one of us would be ultimately surprised though if the Mavericks pulled it off. Yeah. Um, I'd actually be surprised if this game ends in in five or less. So I don't see Boston dominating and winning this game, and Dallas maybe only winning one or getting swept. I really think this game, this series. Will be six or seven, to be honest. It's gonna be fun, dude. I, I know that uh, we're gonna watch some games because you know it, it is the finals, so we got to watch a game or two. Yeah, and plus we want to be a little vested because we're against the Celtics in this aspect. Yes. Dang it! <laughs> Sick and tired of this team. <laughs> Sick and tired of this whole organization. Just go away. Brad Stevens, you want to coach, bro? I mean, I know you're building a dynasty over there in Boston, but, you know, could go to back to coaching. i got two places I'd like you to be. Oregon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, Lakers. Homers. Homers. So? But, yeah, I mean. I mean, if Florida's needing a new basketball coach, too. I mean, Oregon's not technically looking for a new coach, but at the same time, right. Dana Altman can't seem to get us into it. Into a championship, so wouldn't mind seeing a replacement via the Warriors. You got us to being better now. Can you take us all the way, Brad Stevens? Like they did, you know, when Mark Jackson brought them into relevance, brought them into dominance, and then Steve Kerr helped them push them into championship contention there all the time. Go. Just saying, wouldn't be such a bad deal, or I mean, if we could pull that off. I don't think Stevens is coaching. He's enjoying himself. He's one executive of the year, and he might be winning a champion as an executive. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, Dan Hurley, Lakers, I guess. J.J. Redick, Lakers, I guess. I don't know, bro. I'm so sick and tired of this storyline. Just hire somebody in Los Angeles. I'm so sick of this. I'm available, by the way. I'll do it for less, and I won't put up a LeBron, LeBron's bullshit. <laughs> in fact, I'll be... Talking to Rob Blink all the time, going, "Will you trade him, please?" <laughs> there you go. Or if I just show up, I'll be like, "Hey, you're a free agent, right? Don't sign with us. Go away." <laughs> They're like, "LeBron left for free." <laughs> I know. The team's gonna get a lot better. Watch. <laughs> anyway, so that's just me being silly, sort of. Anyways. <laughs> hey man, gotta go on your tangents. I get it. I know, right? All right. So hopefully we'll be back next week. Um, we'll do. We some... need to be more consistent. I know it's it's really my fault. I mean, I've been been sick and dealing with stuff. So yeah, we need to be. All right. Uh, next week we'll do some more wrestling talk. Ooh. Next week, we can still do something in basketball. I actually came up with an idea I think would actually help the league besides my ex- schedule expansion. Because a lot of people are really confused by the conference and division alignment. I think I might have figured out a way to solve it and give them also opportunities for expansion. Well, cool. I'm interested to hear it. 
All right, so we'll do that next week. Some wrestling talk. Uh, don't think we have to do. F- well, actually, yes, football talk because the UFL playoffs are kicking off this weekend too. So we'll talk some uh, UFL playoffs. Sweet. And then, of course, we'll have baseball talk as well. So not trying to dismiss baseball that much, but but we're we're early. We're, we're, early we're still season. early in the season, so it's kind of hard. But uh, we'll at least give a standings update, at least if we don't have anything else um, there you go. important to talk about. All right, so that'll do it for us here at Sports Talk. And as always, I just said Sports Talk. <laughs> wow, bro. That'll do it for us here at Four Pillar Sports. And as always, keep, keep on, on talking, talking sports. sports. Four Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans, made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. Like, follow, and subscribe to keep up with everything in the wide world of. For Pillar Sports, and remember, keep on talking sports.